Hello class, and welcome to section 10.4, which is about the Pythagorean Theorem. By the end of today's lesson, you will know what this theorem is, you will know what its converse is, and you will know how to use both of them. First off, the Pythagorean Theorem deals with right triangles. So we learned yesterday about classifying triangles by their angles. The Pythagorean Theorem only deals with triangles whose biggest angle is a right angle. The legs are the sides of the right triangle that come together to form the right angle. The hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle and is always the longest side. So when we're looking at this, uh, AB and BC, so those pieces that come together to form the right angle are going to be the legs. So these are the two legs of the triangle. The side opposite, and what I mean by opposite is if you drew a line out of that angle, the line would run into the opposite side. This side over here is the hypotenuse. So this is always going to be the longest side of a right triangle, that diagonal side. The Pythagorean Theorem states that if a triangle is a right triangle, so if the biggest angle is 90 degrees, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the two legs of the triangle and c is the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We can use this theorem to find measurements on a triangle. So, for example, we have measurements for the legs. So I'm just going to call this one A and this one B. Doesn't matter, you could flip-flop them. And we're missing side C, so that hypotenuse side across from the right angle. So what we can do here is say A squared, so 8 squared, plus B squared, which is 15 squared, is equal to C squared. Now, you can go ahead and solve or simplify this. 8 squared is 64 plus 15 squared is 225 equals C squared. So then we can keep simplifying and say 64 plus 225 is equal to 289. That equals C squared. Then we can go back to what we learned in lesson 10.1 about solving squares. We can take the square root of both sides, and we're going to get that C is equal to 17 millimeters. We don't use negative 17 in this case because you can't have a negative measurement for the side of a triangle. So our hypotenuse for this particular triangle is 17 millimeters. Go ahead and find the hypotenuse for this triangle on your own. So we've got 24 squared plus 45 squared equals c squared, 576 plus 2025 equals c squared, 2601 equals c squared, the square root of that is 51 inches. We can also use this theorem to help us find the legs. So in this case, we have a ladder is leaning up against a house. If it helps, you can draw a little picture. Here's my house, and here's my ladder leaning up against the house. The ladder is 15 feet. The base of it is 3.5 feet away from the house. Notice that is forming a right angle which means that we're missing one of our legs of our triangle, how far up it goes. So when we're setting up this problem, I'm going to say 3.5, which I'm going to say is A squared plus B squared is equal to my hypotenuse of 15 squared. Again, you want to go ahead and solve those exponents. So when I do 3.5 squared, I'm going to get 12.25 plus b squared is equal to 225. 
Then in order to isolate that variable to get b squared by itself, I'm going to have to subtract 12.25 from both sides of my equation. When I do that, I get that b squared is equal to uh, 212.75. Then you're going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And when you do that, you're going to get a very long decimal. So we're going to go ahead and round to two decimal places, which is going to give me 14.59 feet as the measurement for how far up the ladder goes on the side of the house. Go ahead and find this missing leg on your own. Setting it up, 25 squared plus b squared equals 40 squared. Squaring our numbers, then subtract, taking the square root and rounding, you get 31.22 feet as the height off the ground for that balloon. The last thing we're gonna talk about is the converse. What the converse means is switching the if and the then part of the statement. So the original Pythagorean theorem said, if it is a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This converse flip-flops it. So it says, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared is an equation that works, then those three sides must form a right triangle. So, for example, on this uh, first example, we would check and we would say 8 squared plus 9 squared equals 12 squared. Solving, we get 8 squared, which is 64 plus 9 squared, which is 81, is equal to 144. 64 plus 81 gives us an answer of 145, which is not equal to 144. So this is not a right triangle. You can use those three sides to make a triangle, but it won't, will not have a right angle as one of its angles. When we come over to this second example, we've got 15 squared plus 20 squared equals 25 squared. When we solve those values, we're going to end up with uh, 225 plus 400 is equal to 625. When we do that math on the left side, 225 plus 400 does indeed equal 625. So this would be, yes, it is a right triangle. So if you drew sides of 15, 20, and 25, they would come together and one of the angles in that triangle would be a right angle. So it is indeed a right triangle. Go ahead and determine if this one is a right triangle on your own. Doing the math, you end up with 100 is equal to 100, so yes, it is a right triangle. If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please feel free to reach out and let me know.